What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Typically we go over on a weekly basis some of the best stocks to buy in the country, Canadian stocks, Canadian stocks only. But this week we're gonna do something a little different and we have done it before, but I feel right now is more important than ever to be going over a couple stocks that we would highly suggest Canadians avoid right now. These are stocks that have severely dipped in price so they present somewhat of a value trap, but the problem is the current economic crisis we're in and the economic conditions moving forward does not bode well for these companies. And in our opinion, they're going to struggle mightily moving forward. And we fielded a lot of questions on these stocks over the last few weeks, which means investors are considering buying them right now, which may be a mistake. So with that being said, let's go over some Canadian stocks that we are avoiding in the month of August. So before I get started, big thank you first to the over 70 YouTube subscribers that joined us over at Stock Trades Premium last week when we offered that huge discount. Uh, it is expired now, unfortunately. You'll have to catch us next time. And another thing, we're gonna put our comment contest back on this week. All you gotta do is comment down below what stocks you feel are really going to struggle even in light of eased COVID restrictions. And next week we'll pick a random comment from below and that person will get a full detailed report on a company of their choosing from Stock Trades Premium. This is something typically only premium members have access to, but we're giving one away a week as yet another thank you for being a loyal subscriber to the channel. Now you have to watch the next video to see that you're a winner and request a report. So what you're gonna wanna do so you don't miss the next video is subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you can tell when our video goes live and you can see the winners of this comment contest and also more great Canadian stocks. So the first stock to avoid in August at all costs is Cineplex. They trade under the ticker CGX on the TSX and this is a Canadian stock that has actually had a ton of interest from investors as of late. And I really think this comes from the fact that it is driven into new investors' heads to buy low and sell high. So when they see a popular brand like Cineplex that is trading significantly below its 52 week highs, they tend to think that there's some sort of value there. But the fact is, the stock market is a representation of the actual companies behind the ticker. It is not just a ticker symbol that has a dollar value. Cineplex is cheap because it should be cheap right now. Just a quick look at their balance sheet and we can see how dire the situation really is. If you look at cash and cash equivalents, the company has spent 72.6% of its cash in a single quarter. Accounts receivable have gone down over 52%. And if we look at total current assets, they have around 139 million. But if we head down to current liabilities, we can see that the company has over $462 million in current liabilities, with about 143 million in accounts payable and just over 115 million in lease obligations. So essentially Cineplex over the next year owes significantly more money than it has to pay. And there are some situations where a company can turn around a balance sheet like this, but the issue with Cineplex is, is they still aren't operational. When you have a company that is in this poor of financial shape and they have absolutely no way of getting out of it because they have no way of generating revenue right now as theaters are shut down during the pandemic, or if they're open, they're playing outdated movies with low attendance. There's simply no way for the company to get out of this situation except to issue more equity in the form of shares or debt. This in turn could cause the stock's price to fall even further. Now another reason investors were buying up Cineplex, and this was probably pre-pandemic, I think a lot of people figured out that this deal was not going through after a while, was the Cineworld acquisition. So Cineworld essentially said that they will pay $2.8 billion or $34 a share to Cineplex shareholders to buy out Cineplex. And the market at first reacted to this news, the stock jumped and people who sold out at that time made the absolute right decision. Because after a while, it became clear that this deal was not going to go through. And in mid-June, Cineworld officially cut ties with Cineplex and walked away from the deal completely. As a result, Cineplex's shares sold off even more as people who were desperately holding on to them in hopes of that deal being finalized just dumped them. Now there's a few things about this Cineworld deal that is going to put more downward pressure on the stock. 
As I said, investors are dumping their shares that were hoping that deal would get put through. But there's also litigation. Cineplex is suing Cineworld, saying that the company had buyer's remorse, where Cineworld says that Cineplex had a breach of contract and there was material changes in the deal. So this is something that is not going to end anytime soon. And you have a worldwide pandemic that is crippling Cineplex's revenue, causing people to stay home, not go to theaters. And then on top of that, you have litigation costs. It's not cheap for these companies to run the lawyers they do, and this could be tied up in the courts for years, costing more money for a company that just doesn't really have that much to burn right now. So hypothetical situation, if COVID simply vanished tomorrow, everything went back to normal, it would still be tough sledding for Cineplex moving forward because movie production has been delayed. So you essentially have theaters open that don't have any movies to draw customers in. I'm not a believer that the cinema industry is dying. I still think that people enjoy going to the movies, eating the food, seeing movies on the big screen. But the thing is, they have to be blockbuster style movies. If this all subsides by the end of the year, Cineplex reopens, but movie production has been delayed, they are going to struggle significantly getting people to come in to watch the movies. Not to mention that I would say it is a very safe bet that these movie theaters will not be full until there is a vaccine or at least a very strong treatment for COVID-19. So not only will they be showing outdated or older movies that will struggle to draw in a ton of customers, they'll also have to run those theaters at half or maybe even one third capacity. And for a company that has the liquidity to survive a year, there is a potential for a bounce back. But the issue with Cineplex is they simply have no cash and they are not in a very good financial position right now to weather a continued storm that is pretty much inevitably going to happen to the theater and cinema world. Now again, even if Cineplex makes it out of this alive, we can see that there is a massive transition happening in the film industry and will more than likely be the final nail in the coffin of these companies if it is successful. And that is the strong transition we're seeing right now from movies to premiere digitally. Like I mentioned before, Mulan, huge blockbuster, would have drawn massive crowds at the theaters is now premiering digitally on Disney+. Plus. And yes, this movie will cost more to consumers, but in the end, it's still going to be cheaper than going to a movie theater. And the thing is, a company like Disney with Mulan, if they were to have it in a theater, they would have to pay out a portion of the revenue to the theater to host the movie. There's a lot of extra costs incurred, whereas if Disney Plus just hosts it on their own platform, they get 100% of the revenue, they get 100% of the data of people watching the movies, and if it proves to be profitable, this is going to be a business model that a ton of studios develop, which is absolutely terrible news for Cineplex. Cineplex lost nearly $3 a share in the first quarter 2020 earnings report, and this isn't even with full COVID implications. Next quarter's earnings are going to be significantly worse. And analysts don't really think it's gonna get any better for the company anytime soon. They predict in 2020 that Cineplex's revenue will fall by approximately 53%. And in 2021, they think revenues will drop by yet another 20 plus percent. These are impacts on revenue that very little companies would have the strength to survive. And a lot of those companies are in better financial shape than Cineplex. Overall, not only will Cineplex be a poor investment moving forward, it has also been a poor investment for current investors over the last half decade, as they've watched a $10,000 investment in the company shrink down to about $1,500 today. And the longer it takes to develop a vaccine and overall eliminate COVID-19, the longer the restrictions are gonna be placed on these companies, the longer their revenues will be impacted severely, and the increased risk of the companies essentially going bankrupt will always exist. So another industry that has been hit very hard by this pandemic is long-term care facilities. And it does make sense. They have a older portion of the population in the facilities. As a result, there is a ton of lawsuits that are coming out from this and Siena Senior Living is not immune to any of them. In fact, in mid-July, the company was hit with its third multi-million dollar class action lawsuit, essentially claiming negligence for its facilities not doing enough to prevent COVID-19 getting in, and when it did get in, not doing enough to contain the virus. 
There was rumors that these long-term care facilities were trimming down on staff prior to the pandemic, and as a result, they didn't have enough staff on hand to prevent the spread of the virus once it got into the long-term care facilities. Overall, it just doesn't look good for companies like Sienna Senior Living. And with these class action lawsuits, if there does end up being negligence, Sienna Senior Living may be responsible for some pretty heavy payouts to people inside of the class actions. And this in turn could affect their cash flows and thus their stock price moving forward for quite some time. Sienna definitely is incurring a lot of expenses when it comes to COVID-19 and will probably incur a lot moving forward as they have to spend more money to ensure the integrity of their buildings, the safety of their residents, and ultimately the long-term well-being of the company. But overall, their occupancy rates remain relatively high and they're still collecting a lot of the rent. Occupancy did drop from around 97.6% to 92.5%, but the company did state that the government in the case of a pandemic actually provides funding to Sienna Senior Living to cover this missed revenue. Issue with Sienna right now is their dividend. That is one of the main reasons why we would suggest looking elsewhere right now. A lot of people are drawn to Sienna Senior Living because it yields around 9% at the time of filming. But the thing with a company yielding this high is you really need to look at the fundamental strength of the dividend. And with Sienna Senior Living, our dividend screener over at Stock Trades Premium would have told you in about five seconds that this dividend is on the verge of being cut. The company currently has a payout ratio of around 1300% of earnings. And this isn't a payout ratio that we'd like to get tunnel vision on. We'd like to expand and look at operating and free cash flows. And unfortunately for Sienna, it's just as bad when looking at these numbers. The company is paying out around 94% of free cash flows towards the dividend and around 73% of operating cash flows. This is a dividend that is simply unsustainable, especially in the height of a pandemic, when we have no idea how bad revenue drops are going to get moving forward. You want a company that is going to be able to pay its dividend safely over time with the money they have now, instead of taking on debt to pay the dividend. Now, is it possible that Sienna maintains this dividend? Absolutely, you might not see a dividend cut, but the fact is this high yield rate Right now is boosting this company's stock price and they're already down nearly 50% to date. So because of a 9% yield, a lot of investors are buying this stock, bloating the price. And if they end up cutting that dividend, it could cause a significant drop in the stock's current price, which could leave investors in a deep, deep hole. It is very, very important that you aren't chasing stocks just based on high yields. We've seen so many stocks during this pandemic cut the dividend and investors have been left holding the bag and now are probably looking at a very long term recovery period just to achieve their original capital. And that is if they didn't sell their stocks for a loss after the dividend was cut. So that's pretty much it for the video today. Short video. I hope you liked it. We went over Cineplex and Sienna Senior Living. Investors are hopeful that a vaccine is coming in the near future. I am cautiously optimistic, but what I do know is there's more than likely not one coming in 2020. And even if they did administer one, I find it very difficult to believe that they would be able to handle worldwide distribution in a very short amount of time. The longer this pandemic draws on, the longer Cineplex is going to have to operate at lower capacities and the bigger threat looms that more studios will move to a digital premiere style method. And if that model proves to be profitable, it could definitely be the dagger in the heart of Cineplex. In terms of Sienna, class action lawsuits are a difficulty. The dividend is teetering on the brink of being unsustainable if it isn't already. And they're going to incur a lot of costs moving forward as long-term care facilities are something that restrictions are going to be eased on pretty much last. There's also a risk of a second wave, more outbreaks in the facilities. And as such, there is a chance that even more class actions pop up. Again, head down below, subscribe to the channel, like the video, hit that notification bell. And again, comment down below, what are some stocks you're avoiding in August, 2020? We'll pick a winner and we'll announce it next week and they will get a full custom detailed report from us over at Stock Trades Premium. It takes about 10 seconds to comment and you're gonna get hours of research absolutely free. 
And as always, we're looking forward to bringing you more great Canadian stocks on this channel. So we'll see you next time.